So, um, knowing that, that when we're talking about remote sensing, we're talking about working with rasters. Uh, I want to talk about four, I think I have time, four properties of rasters. Get through all four of these. Four properties of the rasters. We'll call them four kinds of resolution that we talk about when we talk about satellite imagery. We'll talk about, in, in all of this, we'll talk about our sort of classic case of talking about a passive remote sensing satellite system as, as our examples here. Kind of leave active remote sensing uh, alone. Uh, the first thing is one that you've heard of, you've already been working with. Since it is a raster, we've got to talk about spatial resolution. Okay, spatial resolution. Just as if you're talking about, you know, a DEM digital elevation model. The, uh, I don't want to directly say the quality because depending on your purpose, you may need different, you know, it may be acceptable to have different kinds of different resolution rasters. But certainly if, um, you know, you, level of detail that's captured, you know, you've got this grid of cells, a raster is a grid of cells, each one of them that is assigned one value. And if you're talking about a uh, digital elevation model, then you get one value in here to assign to tell you that elevation in that particular cell. Uh, but then obviously, if this is a well, 100 meter by 100 meter cell, so spatial resolution of 100 meters, you're going to have a lot less detail than if you had a raster of one meter resolution. But so spatial resolution is also one of the first things you want to know whenever you're going to be involved in any kind of satellite imagery analysis. What is the spatial resolution of the rasters that this particular system generates? So if you think about it, uh, you know, our little image of the planet here with the satellite in orbit and then the sun's over here and then the sunlight's bouncing off the planet and up into the satellite's collector. Well, it's going to assign some number. It's going to take some kind of measurement about what's bouncing up into it. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but then it's going to, you're, I mean, the, the basic question is how often is it going to take that measurement? As it's going across, is it taking it every one kilometer? Is it taking it every hundred meters? Is it taking it every one meter? You know, sometimes we have uh, sub-meter, you know, resolution now in some of our, our sensor systems. But, you know, if you're going back and doing a historical analysis, you may have to deal with, uh, uh, lower resolution satellite images, uh, even if you can have a much higher resolution today. So uh, spatial resolution is the first thing that we, we need to talk about. And you'll find all of this reported. It's pretty common, like the, the Landsat program, uh, that particular satellite uh, program, it was pretty common for a lot of their satellites to have a 30 meter resolution. It's going to take some kind of measurement once every 30 meters, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one. Uh, it was more difficult. It, al it also measured heat. Sometimes, depending on what you're measuring, you're able to measure it at different uh, resolution. Uh, it also measured heat, uh, thermal radiation that was coming off the planet, but it was much more difficult to design a system, a sensor that could uh, give you a value or some kind of reading on heat than it was on other kinds of electromagnetic radiation. So if you're using the same satellite, the spatial resolution of the band that tells you temperature, you know, tells you heat, uh, was I think one kilometer. So I mean, that's a, a big difference between the spatial resolution depending on what you can measure. Um, so since we've talked about rasters, and this is the one that you've worked with the most, I'm not going to dwell on it much here. But every time if you're going to download satellite imagery, you're looking at different kinds of uh, satellite systems, are going to purchase some commercial imagery, all of them are going to report the resolution at which that data set was collected. I do like, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't like to overdraw this analogy, 
but I do like to use it uh, in order to describe all of these different kinds of resolutions and this is you know, taking a picture. If you're just taking an ordinary picture, your camera on your cell phone is a remote sensing system. It's going to allow you to capture information without having to touch your subject you know, about it. It's one that we use pretty commonly. Uh, maybe in, in some senses, of course, it can be geographic information because our photos can be geotagged. You know, so you could just take you know, with an iPhone or other cell phone and geotag your position of the photos that you took. Uh, but in general, not thinking about that, just talk, talking about, hey, I want to take a picture of my friend um, one of the things you'd be concerned about with the, you know, as far as the specs of your camera is what would be the spatial resolution of your camera. And, you know, we talk about different, how many mega, megapixels, what's the resolution of your camera. They're talking about spatial resolution here. And so it doesn't, I mean, it should seem pretty intuitive to you then, especially because everybody takes photos on their phone, that the higher the spatial resolution of your camera, the better the photo is going to be able to take. Because, of course, it's also taking a whole bunch of measurements. It's generating a raster for you, you know, when you take that photo. It's also taking a whole bunch of measurements. And if I've just got one measurement to take a picture of my friend with, you know, one value, I'm not going to be able to take all that great a photograph. But the higher the resolution of the camera that I've got, what it's telling you is that it's going to be chopping the area that it's taking the picture of into increasingly large numbers of pixels. And then it's going to be able to return a value for every one of those pixels. Now, of course, a, a photographer will tell you that uh, you know, megapixels isn't everything. But most of us are at least intuitively aware that if you go in and you're trying to buy a camera, one that's got a higher spatial resolution is going to be better than one with a lower spatial resolution. So you can think of it in, in terms of Aerial, actually, but in gen, general, talking about photography, you know, aerial photography is also a kind of remote sensing system. You know, just putting a camera on a plane and flying aerial photography. There's a tremendous amount of information that you can get off of aerial photography as well. Uh, I love uh, going back to like things like World War II cartography manuals or manuals in general from the U.S. Army. You know, they did a tremendous amount of stuff with photographs. What kind of information can you get off of photographs? We teach, it has, it has not been taught, we have on the books, it hasn't been taught in about three years, but there is specifically a class in the geography department on aerial photo interpretation. So if you fly aerial photography, what kinds of information can you really get from air photos? And it's a tremendous amount. I think that it's probably that that alone is an underused thing in society because we have access to it so readily. Uh, you know, going to Google Maps, it doesn't give you the kind of sophisticated stuff that a dedicated remote sensing specialist wants, but it does give you stuff that looks a lot like aerial photography, and there's probably a lot more that we could be doing with that that's freely available that we're not. So hopefully that class will, will get taught again another, another year or two, I hope. Um, but okay, all right, so spatial resolution. Let me give you number two. Thinking about this in terms of taking a picture with your camera, the second kind of resolution that you're concerned with in remote sensing is called radiometric. Radiometric resolution. And this is telling you how sensitive your uh, sensor or your, the instrument that you're using, how sensitive it is to um, the reflection of whatever it is that you are collecting. You know, I'll say here uh, EMR, electromagnetic radiation. I mean, in a general sense, you could talk about how sensitive uh, you know, a, a radar system would also have a radi radiometric resolution about how sensitive it is going to be to the return of the radar signal. But if you're talking about this situation over here, well, how sensitive is your sensor to being able to detect uh, the return of the electromagnetic radiation? So to think about this in terms of taking a photo with your camera, let's say we jumped this hurdle. You know, they say, hey, I've developed this new camera. It's got a one pixel resolution. Okay, well, that's no good. We've got to increase the spatial resolution. So we do that and we get this high spatial resolution camera now. 
But then they go, oh, well, okay, so then the next question is, okay, well, what's the radiometric resolution of that camera? And they say, well, rather low. It can only detect the presence or absence of radiation returning from that area. Like, it'll give you a zero or a one. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. But, you know, maybe this particular sensor has a particular threshold. Um, you know, the, the return of radiation from any particular area, I mean, could be any quantity. You know, there's all kinds of variation in quantity of radiation. But maybe the sensor that we designed has kind of got poor radiometric resolution. The sensor can only determine, uh, you know, it has to have at least a certain amount, whatever, you know, this amount, of radiation return before it says, yep, radiation coming from that area. Otherwise, if it didn't reach that threshold, the sensor says, nope, no radiation. Okay. Uh, so if we were trying to take a picture of our friend with that, it really wouldn't matter at that point if we had a high spatial resolution because we'd have each one of these filled with either a zero or one. If I'm taking a picture of you, I'm saying, the camera would say, is there light bouncing off of that little area on that person, or is there not? And if there is, then one, if not, zero. So, and then we could say, well, give me all the places that it says there is light, a one, and all the places that there is not light, a zero, and I could have a very high spatial resolution photograph of nothing but black and white pixels that would probably look nothing like you. So we would have to, at that point, go back to the engineers and say, all right, well, we need to, we've crossed this hurdle, but now we need to be able to de detect much greater variation in uh, radiation return strength. We need to increase the radiometric resolution. This is our sensitivity. And so uh, that's what they do. And so you'll look at different sensor systems and it will report to you how sensitive it is. It's pretty common, you see this a lot, like 256, like 256 different values. You see in lots of different things the values between 0 and 255, you know, different kinds of bits, the amount of storage space that uh, uh, different things take up. So this is actually a pretty common radiometric resolution. In order to say, if you see this, you know, 256 different values, 0 to 255. This sensor will be able to much more finely divide the amount of radiation return. Okay. If there's no radiation return at all, okay, I'll return zero. If there is an extreme amount of radiation return, the highest I can detect, I'll return 255. And then I've got this gradation that I can give you between zero and 255. You could go much higher than that. You can go lower than that. Different systems have different ones. Maybe you can only get values between 0 and 8, you know, or 0 and 64, 0 and 255. Maybe you can get it more, more finely, much more fine, uh, 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 much more finely uh, determined sensor radiation reflection than that. Um, but now we were getting someplace. Think about that again in terms of taking the picture of your friend. Now I'm not going to get just, yes, there's light, or no, there's not light. Now I'll be able to get maybe for between 0 for 255 for every single one of those pixels about how much light is returning. And if you think about that, then I can say, let's use just a standard color stretch. I know, I'll say color in all cells that are 0, no light, jet black. Color in cells that are returning the most light, white, pure white and then give me this stretch of gray, you know, fill in all those different shades of gray between pure white and pure black, and then show me that raster. Now you're getting someplace. If you think about what that would look like, you'd be looking at a black and white image of that person. Okay. So you'd probably, you know, if, you, so if you've got good spatial resolution and you've got good radiometric resolution, then we're now at a black and white image of the person. Questions? Is the camera considered a passive or an active? I, I guess in I guess it could be either. Like just thinking about the camera on your cell phone. If you just take it, I suppose that's a passive picture. But sometimes if you turn the flash on, it would turn it into an active system because the camera itself will emit the light and then measure the return. 
So if you turn the, you know, to continue that kind of analogy, and like I said I don't want to overdraw it in a certain sense, but to continue the analogy, no flash passive system, turn the flash on, you've got an active remote sensing system.